Hi, I'm no art history buff, but I know good art when I see it, so let's take a break from all the serious stuff like week-long presidential elections or four-minute videos on boy band songs or stupidly long lists. And let's just check out some good art for a minute. Wait a second, art? What is this, a tweet? Can that be art? Not just a tweet, but a raunchy one. Well, let's ask the art gatekeepers if we're allowed to talk about a tweet as art. Is it okay? Oh, as long as I just justify it once briefly? Nice, okay, well, here's a dictionary definition if you like those, and I think a tweet counts as conscious use of skill and creative imagination. But if you like to get beyond definitions, take a stroll down Encyclopedia Lane. Oh, okay, this encyclopedia entry doesn't include anything about writing being art, but I stand by the fact that writing is art and tweets are writing, so tweets are art. That's a syllogism, baby. You can't dialectic your way out of that one. So this encyclopedia entry doesn't really help us, actually, but it does coincidentally hint at exactly where I'm going with this brief video on an iconic election night two. Cody Johnston tweet. You may know Cody's great show that he and Katie Stoll create called Some More News. I've been a fan for about six months and honestly the show really helped me get through some hard nights during this pandemic. I'm not going to talk about the show or anything because I want to keep this short and sweet but definitely check it out if you don't know it. When Cody tweets, he definitely gets a big response, but this tweet actually got one of the biggest. He tweeted this from his personal account, which actually has well over two times as many followers as the Some More News account. Maybe it's because he lets loose with this kind of art on his personal account. Because let me tell you, as much engagement as he usually gets, I was on Twitter right when he posted this, and wow, this thing skyrocketed. Now, it was night two of the election, so more people were on Twitter than usual. I feel like it's relatively safe to to assume. Since I was online right when he dropped this work of art, I was able to see the immediate reaction of his followers, and let me tell you, many of them were grossed out. There were all kinds of grossed out reaction gifts and a few concerned fans expressing disgust, frustration, and most hilariously disappointment. I think it's somewhat evened out in the 20 hours since, but it was blatantly clear that the majority of responses were negative. But that's obviously not what makes it art. People responding negatively to something and being shocked doesn't automatically make it art or else it would be art when some inconsiderate fool throws a milkshake at a drive through worker. I'm not here to argue that Cody's tweet was art because, as I already proved, that's true by dictionary definition. I'm here to show his tweet was a specific kind of art and to talk about the function that that art serves. Which brings us back to that encyclopedia entry that wasn't so helpful at first. Now, you may recognize this painting and you may recognize this urinal that the artist Marcel Duchamp submitted to an exhibition in New York City in 1917. The urinal obviously was meant to challenge people's perception of what constitutes art. And it did. But that's not what Cody's tweet is doing, of course. Cody's tweet is much more in line with another piece of art by Marcel Duchamp. This right here, which you may notice looks kind of like that painting from the encyclopedia entry. This was done by Duchamp two years after his urinal masterpiece and is called a ready-made in that the artist didn't create it from the ground up, but used an object he found. If you're wondering whether Marcel broke into the Louvre and stole the painting to draw the goatee and mustache on it, unfortunately he didn't. Though in fact, just a few years earlier, between 1911 and 1913, the painting had been stolen and missing. But no, Duchamp just found a postcard with the image and drew on it. Okay, I'm just going to apologize now for all the French pronunciation that I get wrong. It's not clear if Duchamp was aware that Eugene Bataille, also known as Arthur Sapek, showed Mona Lisa smoking a pipe over three decades earlier, but either way, Duchamp's work goes much further. In my view, there's a significant difference between showing an idol doing something we wouldn't think of her doing and showing her being different from how we're used to her being. You may be thinking that both works send the same message deface idols. But Duchamp goes further, not just entertaining us with a funny pipe smoking Mona, but bringing us a Mona that may make us question our assumptions about gender and sex. This was a theme in Duchamp's work, including when he adopted his own female pseudonym, Rose Selavi, pronounced Eros Selavi, meaning Eros, that's life. Eros is the god of romantic love and intimacy. Cool, but anyway, what's the big deal? Mona Lisa's got some facial hair. Is this really so transgressive? We haven't gotten to the title, where Duchamp goes full mask off, fuck your feelings. 
The title of the ready-made, which we see here, literally on the surface of the piece, is L-H-O-O-Q. Now again, I'm sorry to any French-speaking viewers because I'm going to struggle with pronunciation here, but L-H-O-O-Q is the title because when you say it in French, you get L-H-O-O-Q, which sounds like L-H-O-O-Q, which translates to she has a hot ass, or she's hot. Or as Duchamp apparently put it later in his life, there is a fire down below, meaning that Mona Lisa was, long story short, horny. Now, whether or not Miss Lisa was in fact horny, we will never know. We don't even know for sure who the person Da Vinci painted was, let alone their degree of horniness. But this title is what takes us back to Cody's tweet, which, believe it or not, is also a sort of ready-made. What all or most of the grossed out and disappointed fans didn't know was that two hours before Cody's tweet, this tweet was produced by actor Bob Clendenin and quickly made the rounds as people mocked it. Now, it seems like most of the people mocked the idea that McCain would be in heaven at all, but the more important point is the criticism that this kind of fetishization and idolization of the powerful in society ignores the harm done by the actions of the powerful, both McCain and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, as well as the harm done by the system that their actions upheld. Nonetheless, Bob didn't do himself any favors by confirming in the replies that he thinks McCain is actually in heaven, and then even telling someone else no one would care if they killed themselves. Like, what the fuck, Bob? So, fuck you, Bob. Bob, you sad boy, you weren't even that good in scrubs or anything else, and yet his tweet was also art. It was bad art, but it was art, as he tries to put this happy image in our heads of neoliberal overlords looking out for us. McCain was bullied by Trump many times, and RBG was a Democrat, so I get it. The idea is they're both happy that Trump is likely to be a one-term president, and for the love of something resembling God, let's not get into criticisms of whether there's an afterlife and whether there's a heaven and a hell. The main criticism is that Bob's tweet promotes the idolization of the powerful. Enter Cody's tweet, which rides in on flaming horseback to tell us Ruth and Johnny both, in fact, have a hot ass. They both have a fire down below, baby. You want to believe in an afterlife that both neocons and neolibs get to enjoy? Fine, but they're both horny and they're going at it without protection. Why should we idolize them or imagine they're looking out for us? Were they ever? Were the systems they perpetuated helping? Helping enough? It is not possible to idolize these dead, powerful people while having any awareness of the oppression and suffering historically and currently taking place by the exact same systems these people perpetuated. We need art that disturbs people and tears down idols. We need to see idols as humans, subject to the oppressive systems they exist within. Cody could have tweeted about the specific things Ruth and John should have been doing differently in their lives, but what's the point? It's so much more helpful to shock people's repressed values. Because our values are the twisted values of a society that would prefer to idolize the powerful than humanize the powerless. Maybe Bob should have tweeted about people of color or trans people or people with pre-existing conditions or people at the intersection of these categories or all the other groups who are fist bumping about an oppressive conservative demagogue being likely to be voted out. The most important people to consider when you're making political statements are vulnerable people. And vulnerable people need a voice, not dead idols. And we all benefit when idols are defaced. I for one hope John and Ruth enjoyed the hot sex they had and Mona Lisa looks hot as fuck with facial hair. Thanks for watching.